Hi, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box just below this video. Welcome to a Yarn and Yarns extra video and today I'm going to be chatting to you about both the um, end of my combo spin because we're coming to the very end of that spin now and also I thought I would um, add into the mix um, a little bit of a chat about how I spin on my spinning wheel. I know a lot of you had asked for extra spinning content and some of you specifically asked about um, my wheels and my spinning tools so I thought I could use this video as a way of combining a couple of those topics. Um, I, As always I would like to preface this with I am not an expert spinner. Um, I've been spinning on my wheel for maybe about a year now and I pretty much do the same thing over and over again and I'm sure there are um, inefficiencies and mistakes peppered in. I have had no lessons or formal training and um, this is just kind of what I've picked up myself and um, how I spin I guess intuitively really. I hope you enjoy the video. I have been recording this in little segments over the course of a few days so there'll be a few outfit changes. I'm not one of these people that you know has uh, an outfit for every hour of the day. I've just been recording <laughs> on different days. Uh, so yeah, let's jump in. I'm very, very close, excitingly, um, to finishing this spin. Um, in a little while, I'll show you the skeins of yarn that I've produced so far. Um, but this is my basket, and I know it still looks pretty full, um, but in the scheme of things, um, compared to where I started, um, there's hardly anything in there at all. Um, so I think maybe one skein, one skein and a bit of yarn left to make from this fluff. So I'm actually going to approach this basket slightly differently than I've approached the rest of the spin. Um, for the spin so far I've literally just been sticking my hand in the basket and pulling out random bits of fluff. I haven't really kept track of any order, um, I've just tried not to spin two um, bumps. So if you remember, if you watched that video, I split all my fibre down into sort of between 6 and 10 gram um, bumps. So I've tried to make sure that um, when I'm pulling these out of the basket, so these two fibres are the same, um, if I'd have pulled this one and then pulled that one, I'd have put this one back. Um, so that's the only sort of management that I've done so far. But now we're coming to the end and I reckon I've only got a couple of bobbins worth of fibre left. Um, I just wanted to make sure that before I um, embark on the spin I'm splitting that fibre so I'm not ending up with loads of the same stuff to go on to a final bobbin at the end. Um, the last couple of bobbins I spun um, turned out to be really quite unusual because to this point I'd managed to put um, similar amounts of fibre on bobbins so I was... Um, applying them together and only ending up with a few meters of singles left but this time I've got loads left on this um, this bobbin um, so I'm going to sort through my basket see what fiber I've got left and try and figure out roughly what fiber I've got on this bobbin and go from there okay so here is what I have left and immediately I can see I've got um, those sort of two that are the same that I pulled out earlier I have got some of this lovely Corridale um, that's the same. That's a bit of the bamboo. Let's have a look, see what else I've got in the basket. I just want to spread this out to see what I have. Uh, that's, that's that. That's some of the Corridale. It's another bit of the bamboo. And then I've got two bits of the um, south down left. So that's everything that I have left in the basket sorted back out into piles so now I'm going to grab that bobbin and I know um, that I've got a bit of that blue um, which is this lovely fibre which was from um, Cat and Sparrow so that can go back in my basket because that's going to be spun onto the second bobbin. On the bobbin here I also have uh, this kind of multicolored fiber which is very similar I know it doesn't really look it but it's very similar to this one which I think was from wall tops so I'm going to put that in my basket because I want that to go on my other um, bobbin now I do have some of this um, is the same fiber as this 
um, but this second bump is fairly small so I think I'm going to put both of those in my basket and actually break my rule and spin those together so I might just quickly um, wind those up into one nest of fluff just to remind myself I'm spinning those together and that's it as far as what I can see on the bobbin um, there may be um, some extra fibre under this section here but I'm not going to wind this off and I'm not going to dig through whatever will be will be as they say um, so I am going to um, just a lot of these here I've got two of so I know that one of these um, bamboo blends can go in the basket one of these um, lovely Corydales can go in the basket and one of the South Downs oh, can't reach that one can go in the basket um, that leaves me with um this little collection here one two three four five six so this bamboo can go on the bobbin there um i think these i've already put one of the corridor in the basket those two are fairly different so actually i'm going to put one of those in the basket and one of those to spin on that bobbin uh, the Shetlands can come on this bobbin as can the BFL and also which I've thrown oh, out of my reach okay so this is what I'm going to go for I'm going to put this lot onto the bobbin that's already started and the lot in the basket will go onto the second bobbin um, so I'm just going to grab a bag and put those into a bag to keep those separate and um, then I can start spinning this later on I've relocated to my living room, which is where my spinning wheel tends to live. Um, the light in here is not the best today, but we will have to make do, and hopefully you will be able to see enough of what I'm doing for it to make sense. Let me just introduce you to the wheel that I'm using at the moment. I have a Haldane Shetland, which is a vintage wheel. They don't make them anymore. So here she is. She is a single treadle, um, double drive wheel. So let me just switch that round. Um, so there's a double drive band. One part of the drive band um, helps turn the flyer and the other um, turns the bobbin. And um, yeah, there's not much really else to say about her. Um, there's very limited things that she can do in terms of um, adjustments to be made and things like that. So this beautiful uh, knob here on the back of the wheel um, can be used to adjust the tension. So if I um, unscrew that, you can see that part uh, moving down, which moves this, um, which loosens the tension, or you can twist it upwards and that tightens up the tension. Um, so that pulls this whole um, sort of flyer up and therefore um, puts more pressure um, on the drive band. And that's really the only um, method of adjustment on this wheel. Um, I only have one flyer and I have three bobbins for the wheel. She has a built-in lazy kate. Uh, so there's two rods here which you can attach bobbins to and you can ply from those or just use them for storage while you're not using your bobbins. Okay, so I am going to set up to spin, which means... Um, I need to take this empty bobbin off of the flyer and I'm going to add in um, this partially started bobbin. Um, so I need to slip the flyer um, out of its holder here. This is just a leather strap. Um, I'm assuming it's the original. This um, wheel was produced um, up until the early 1980s, I believe. Um, so I'm not entirely sure of the exact age of the wheel. Um, I was able to purchase it from a local lady who found out I was after a wheel. So all I need to do is push the leather um, strap forward and then I can pop this whole flyer section off. Just lift up my drive band and let that drop down. And then I can loosen um, the uh, whirl at the back here and slide that off. And then my bobbin just slides off the flyer So obviously to set myself back up, I need to do that in reverse. So the bobbin just slides on to the flyer and then I pop my whirl on and tighten that up. Oh, 
all done. Um, so now I need to reassemble that. So I'm going to lift my drive band back up. I'm trying to keep the drive band connected to the bottom of the wheel um, so that it's under tension. And so the back rod goes into the hole at the back there. Probably can't see exactly what I'm doing, but you'll have to imagine that bit. And then obviously the front slips back into that leather strap. The final part of the setup to get me ready to spin is to make sure that one of those um, sides of the um, drive band is attached to the bobbin. And I'm gonna put the other one on the back there. And I will probably, because I fiddled with that tension knob to show you um, how to change that, I'll probably need to have a play around with that before I get starting to spin properly um, so that I'm working at the right tension. So the final thing that I need to do is to feed my fibre um, through the orifice here um, to get myself ready to spin. Um, so the Haldane came with a lovely or orifice hook um, in a beautiful wood that matched um, the wheel. Unfortunately, the actual hook part, so the piece that we looks like a bit of copper wire or something, um, actually popped out of the um, wooden end handle recently. Um, but since then, I have been using this gorgeous hook. Can you see that? made by my lovely friend Caroline, um, who is Colourful Creativity. Um, you'll find her at colourfulcreativity.nl and she makes these beautiful um, glass beads herself. And she very kindly sent me this beautiful hook um, in my advent package this December. Um, and this is the perfect fit for my Haldane. So basically the hook end slides through the orifice and then let me unwind this a little bit. I hook my fiber over that hook end. Oops, doing it a bit cat candidly because I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can kind of see what's going on. Can you see that? Um, the fiber is now attached to the hook and then I'm just gonna pull that back through um, so that it comes out of the front of the orifice there. I'm gonna pull that through a little way because as you can probably see, as I let go, my fiber is kind of untwisting, um, which means it's weakening and is liable to pull apart. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room there to play with because as I say, I know I'm going to probably need to um, fiddle around with the tension a little bit before I can get spinning properly. So I shall do that now. I'll make my adjustments and then we'll come back and start to spin. I'm all set up and I've got my new fibre connected. Um, I pulled this um, BFL fibre out of the basket. Um, this has probably been my least favourite fibre to spin with. Um, I picked it up from a local producer when we were in Yorkshire and I'm not sure if it was the dyeing process or if it had been stored for a long time but the fibre is quite compacted and it's quite difficult to draft out smoothly. Um, so I have been struggling with this fibre a little bit um, but nonetheless um, I have been working through it and um, the colours are just beautiful so they make a nice dish addition to the skeins of yarn that I'm producing. So yeah I'm basically ready to spin now so um, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm spinning in the same direction direction and I always tend to um, spin my singles um, clockwise and then ply them anti-clockwise that's just a habit that I've gotten into um, so to get going I just need to give the wheel a bit of a push in the right direction and then start pushing down on the foot pedal and um, away we go so I tend to stick to a um, short forward draw at the moment. Um, I will, my goals for 2020 are to start experimenting a little bit more with my spinning. Um, I've kind of got comfortable with this um, sort of short forward and I'm going quite slowly um, so hopefully you can see what my um, hands are doing. Um, but basically as I treadle I'm just teasing out um, little bits of fibre um, from the fibre that I have in my hand. I need to join on some more in a minute. Um, letting the twist go back um, into that so let me try and swing you around a little bit maybe focus on my hands a little bit more treadling teasing out some fiber treadling teasing out some fiber treadling just trying to tease roughly the same amount of fiber out at a time 
Um, but as I say, this particular fibre is a bit temperamental. When I first started spinning, um, I was all about trying to be super consistent and get that really nice smooth yarn. Um, but if I want that really super consistent, nice smooth yarn, I can just buy that. Um, so <laughs> from a commercial producer. So more and more, I'm less about perfection when it comes to my hand spun and I love uh, the texture and the color. I'm saying that you shouldn't strive for perfection if that's what you want. Um, and obviously um, getting consistency um, is a real skill in spinning. So that's definitely something um, that's worth working towards. Um, but now I am a little bit more consistent and a little bit more practiced. I'm less worried about consistency, if that makes sense, because I like, um, the textured nature of the hand spun yarns. So I need to join in um, another piece of this fibre. Um, this broke up into several little pieces as I was drafting it. Um, so I'm basically going to sort of lay this over the top and um, there are lots of different methods for joining and um, one of the best ones I've seen is where you treadle and sort of like smooth the fibres back so that they cling together. I, I don't always um, get um, the, that um, method consistent at the moment so I'm just sticking to laying um, a really sort of loose um, amount of fibre over the top of the end of the yarn that I'm um, spinning and away we go the fibres naturally want to attach to themselves and as you can see I'm now working from the um, much larger piece of fibre in my hand I hope you can see this okay and the um, background of my fireplace is not too distracting. Um, I'll try and zoom in on my hands when I do some editing on this video. So if I do end up with, uh, you can see here this bit's um, a bit thicker and a bit slubbier. Um, I'm trying to spin this relatively thick so I probably need to um, up the thickness a little bit to match the rest of um, the spin um, but if you do end up with a slubby bit this bit isn't too bad um, but as long as there's plenty of twist in this piece of fiber you can see it's really strong um, I can actually pick some of that out and put that in my waste pile if I really wanted to um, so there you go I've smoothed that down and that's a much uh, less sort of noticeable difference in thickness there You can get very technical about spinning um, in terms of um, how much you're drafting, how much you're treadling. Um, if you want to aim for like really super consistent yarns, um, there are lots of um, extra, as I say, techniques that you can use. You can get really technical um, to try and improve your consistency. Um, but I'm not really worried about that um, for this spin, and I'm not sure if. The super technical spinning is really a road that I want to go down. Um, I like spinning for fun and for re relaxation and more and more I'm enjoying just letting the fibres do what they want to do. So I'm just going to sit and spin through um, the rest of this bump, it shouldn't take too long.
So I've just angled you down. I've angled you down so you can hopefully see what my hands are doing a little bit better. Um, I'm just about to join in some new fiber. Um, I've got uh, the bamboo blend next. Um, sorry if this is blowing out the lights very harsh today, um, but hopefully it will give you an idea of what my hands are doing. Um, so the camera is just off to one side, but um, sort of up above me. And I'm gonna hopefully show you a little bit more detail what my hands are doing. So I'm pinching the fibre, um, I'm holding the bulk of the fibre in my hand here and with my front hand I am pinching the fibre, pulling it forward, I'm not letting the twist um, go into the fibre where I don't want it to be. So pinch forward, pull back, pinch forward, pull back, pinch forward, pull back, pinch forward, pull back and I'm just repeating that rhythm uh, through the fibre, pulling out um, fibre in uh, sort of trying to be consistent about the amount that I'm pulling out each time. Um, I can um, sort of control the thickness by how much fibre I'm pulling through my fingers. It's, I'm probably not doing this exactly as I would if I was just sat spinning without um, sort of paying attention to the camera, but it's the same kind of motion feels a little bit more exaggerated because I'm trying to um, sort of show you what I'm doing. So I actually have to get out and go to work my alarm's just gone off to remind me to leave the house because <laughs> I knew I'd get caught up in uh, filming this video so I'm just going to pop my fiber um, over the end of my wheel there and leave that off to one side and head out to work for the day looks like I need to brush my hair before I go anywhere <laughs> Um, I'll be back again soon and um, I'll show you a little bit more about what my feet are doing um, as opposed to my hands. So I'm just about to pop in a little bit of footage of what my feet are up to when I'm spinning and there's not really too much to say about what they're doing. Um, I'm just trying to press down on the foot pedal, treadle, as an even pace as possible um, just to keep a nice rhythm going and to help me sort of draft my yarn as consistently as possible. So that's it for um, how I spin my singles really on my wheel at the moment. Um, I hope you don't mind, I'm spinning away as we chat. Um, I like to try and get in a little bit of spinning if I have time before I go out to work. And I'm really trying to um, get this basket empty before I go away this weekend. Uh, so I hope you don't mind that I'm just continuing to spin a little bit off camera while I'm chatting. Uh, so yeah, I think that's kind of shown you everything, what my hands are up to, what my feet are up to, um, we, how I set up my wheel when I'm trying to uh, start spinning. So if there's anything else that I haven't covered uh, that you'd like to know about, um, then by all means, as always, leave a comment below the video. So I'm just going to spin away now for a while and try and empty my basket of fibre. I've got four bumps left in there, um, as well as the one that I'm currently spinning um, to get through. And then I'll be back to show you how I ply the yarn. Um, throughout the process of this combo spin, I have just been two plying my yarn to try and maximise uh, the meterage more than anything else. Um, I don't know... Um, how much I'm going to need for my sweater project um, but I figure the more meters the merrier really gives me more options more to play with and because of the way that I'm spinning the fiber so this combo spin it will be very difficult for me to add in extra yarn at the end in the course of um, going through my basket I'll have used up all of the fiber that I originally picked out so if I add in any extra fiber braids 
uh, bats, bumps, whatever at the end. There'll be different fibres, different colourways, um, so they probably won't be as cohesive with the rest of the spin. Um, so obviously when you, if you want to embark on a project like this, it's probably better to spin more than you need rather than not quite enough. Uh, so hopefully I'll have plenty of meterage, but um, it won't be long now before we can take a look at everything I've spun and how much yarn I've got. I finished my last two bobbins of fibre. The basket for my combo spin is empty. I'm about to embark on a little bit of plying. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just two plying this um, spin. I'm actually gonna use the built-in Lazy Kate on my wheel. Um, so I'll show you that again in a second. Um, but basically the principle is the same as spinning singles, except that you want to go in the opposite direction. So I span my singles clockwise, which means I shall be plying anti-clockwise. So I don't undo all that twist that I've put into the fiber. Okay, so as you can see, my Haldane has a built-in Lazy Kate. I do have a separate one as well that was given to me when I was given the Ashford uh, wheel that I am trying to get up and running. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna use this. Some people prefer to have their um, Lazy Kates. So basically a Lazy Kate is just a contraption where you attach a couple of bobbins um, while you're about to ply your fibers together. Um, so as you can see, these kind of like spin round on the um, central rods to allow the bobbins to move and uh, sort of bring the fiber out and together so you can um, twist them together. Um, but yes, I'm just going to use the built-in Lazy Kate um, on my wheel for convenience today and we're just gonna get going. This is really exciting. This is the final two bobbins of my spin. <laughs> I've just finished plying the first bobbin. Uh, the top bit's really fluffy. Uh, it's got a lot of that south down in. Um, so I need, I've still got um, plenty of fiber down there on my bobbins, um, but this is full now. And um, I could squeeze probably a little bit more on there, but the wheel has stopped wanting to wind on. So I'm going to pop this off and um, onto my niddy noddy, wind it up into a skein. So I shall show you how I do that. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how I wind my yarn around my knitting noddy. This is a little bit awkward because I'm standing behind the camera and I'm going to hold uh, my knitting noddy and the fibre in front of the camera so I can show you exactly what my hands are doing. Hopefully you can see. Um, so this is my knitting noddy. Um, for anyone who is not a spinner, it's basically a pole with some um, arms at each end onto which we can wind a skein. So I'm going to I'm grabbing the yarn from my bobbin and I'm just gonna tie it around the middle in a loose knot. Doesn't have to be perfect at all, just so it's hanging out there. So now I'm gonna start wrapping um, the yarn in a figure of eight motion um, around the niddy noddy. So up over one arm, down, around, up, down, and around. So all of my arms are in play. I can't really hold this far enough away to show you exactly, but hopefully you get the gist. I'm just gonna continue to do that until there is no yarn left on the bobbin. Okay. 
guess what? I've done it. I finished my spin. I can't quite believe it. It's pretty exciting. I've just wound up the last yarn onto my nitty noddy. So I just need to tie that off. Um, so basically um, around each leg of the nitty noddy, um, I will be tying a figure of eight knot. So I usually use bits of scrap yarn or scrap cotton for this. And I just split the yarn um, into like I'm showing with my finger and wrap the um, sort of waist yarn around to try and keep those sort of strands separated and so they won't knot together in the washing process. Um, I have a tiny wee little bit of uh, fiber left on the bobbin, which is not too bad. Um, I'll probably um, wind that off and two ply it into a teeny tiny mini skein in case I need a few extra yards for this project, but it's all one color, so it's gonna be um, a solid color rather than a sort of mild uh, barber pole variegated um, section like um, the rest of the spin. So yeah, I just need to give this um, final little batch of yarn a soak and then I shall be ready to measure um, how much yarn I have made and choose a pattern. Wow. <laughs> My final skein of yarn is still downstairs in the bathroom drying off but in front of me I have a big pile of all of the other skeins that I've spun for my combo spin and I'm going to start just quickly measuring them out roughly so I can figure out how much meterage I've got from the spin. I'm not going to be particularly scientific about that, I'm just going to lay them on the floor with a tape measure and do a rough calculation. Here it is in all of its finished glory. <laughs> Look at all that. It's going to be one crazy sweater. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, large skeins. I've got that small sample skein um, that I first spun and I've got um, another skein about this size downstairs um, that I shall bring up probably later on this evening or tomorrow once it's had another few hours to, to hang out and dry. So this is my super inaccurate and um, not super scientific way of me measuring how much um, I have from my yarn. So I've laid out this tape measure. So I'm starting with them roughly at the beginning, but as you can see, some of that is overlapping, but some of the inner skeins are sort of at the edge of that. And then down this side, the same. Um, so I'm calling this sort of 30 inches, although there's a little bit more in some places, a little bit less. And then I will literally go through and count how many lengths um, of yarn that I have got and uh, multiply that by well actually it will be 60 inches in effect because um, obviously I've laid this skein out double so um, that's going to be sort of the rough way that I go about calculating um, approximately how much yarn I've got. So that's it the spin is done apologies for the dodgy lighting it's about seven o'clock in the evening and I'd hoped to get this recorded before I left for work this morning, but I got distracted with other things and didn't quite get to it. Um, but all my skeins are now washed, dried, measured, and here we go, a nice big pile of yarn. I'm gonna slowly disappear behind. <laughs> um, so I've got approximately 1400 meters of, I would say, a DK-ish yarn. Um, if you're a spinner or you've worked with hand spun before, you'll know that it can often be a touch inconsistent. Um, so I definitely have some finer um, bits, sections in places and some thicker in others. 
um, but that's all part of the fun of hand spun. I'm hoping to do a bit of a swatch this weekend just to see um, what sort of needle size I want to knit the yarn on. I'm kind of erring towards maybe a 4.5 at this point, uh, but yes, I shall wind up one of these skeins and uh, actually get on the needles. As I say, I'm hoping it will be a little treat for myself at the weekend. Um, and then I shall decide on my pattern and exactly how I'm gonna knit this. Um, but I think that's probably for another video. So I'm gonna sign off here for now and um, there'll be a last shot of what these skeins look like. I did manage to get a few seconds of footage of just the skeins laid out on the floor this morning in much better light. Um, so yeah, I've come to the end of my combo spin adventure. I hope that you found something to enjoy in the video. And again, just before I leave, I want to reiterate that I am by no means an expert spinner. I'm just showing you how I spin. And this is the first time I've attempted to spin for a sweater. So hopefully as I progress and do more spins like this, I shall improve. <laughs> we can but hope. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you do have any questions, um, any thoughts, any ideas, um, please um, leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to chat to you. Uh, until next time, I hope that you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. And great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.